Hello there, and to all who come to this happy place, welcome. If you're new here, my name is Abby, and I upload Disney planning content here on my channel every Sunday and Thursday under normal circumstances. This is a bonus video for you guys being posted on Tuesday. So, with that being said, if you have not already, make sure to hit the red subscribe button down below and tap the notification bell so you don't miss any of my future uploads. If you've already done that, make sure to give this video a thumbs up so I know you're here. And in today's video, we are going to be talking about the Disney dining plan. Now, I know what you're thinking. Abby, you did a Disney dining plan video not that long ago. And to that I would say you are correct. However, Disney likes to throw us a curveball every once in a while and they actually added a dining plan. So, I actually really like this dining plan. I think it's a good idea. So, now I'm going to tell you about all four Disney dining plans and what they mean for your next Disney vacation. So when we're talking about dining plans, there are three different kinds of credits that you need to know about. The first one is a quick service dining credit. This is going to be good at a quick service dining location, which is somewhere like Cosmic Rays or Pagos Bills in the Magic Kingdom or Electric Umbrella and Regal Eagle Smokehouse in Epcot. Stuff like that. You go to a counter, you place your order, and then you find your own seating after you take your tray of food and go look around. Now, the next type of credit is going to be a table service credit. Table service credits are good at sit-down locations. They're good at character dining, they're good at um, family style, buffets, somewhere where you order off a menu, places like that. Anything that has a waiter, that would be considered table service. The third credit that you need to know about is the snack credit. Snack credits can be used all over Walt Disney World property. Anything with the purple Disney dining plan symbol, which I will insert a picture of here, but anything with that symbol is eligible for a snack credit. Now, you really want to keep your snacks to above $4 just to make sure you're getting the full value out of your snack credit. But that's just a fun fact. Now that you know what these credits mean, these credits are allotted in points per night. So each person in your room over the age of three, so three years old, if they have a park ticket, they have a dining plan. If they don't have a park ticket, they do not have a dining plan. That's how you should remember that. Um, so the credits are given per person on a per night basis. So if you are going from Saturday to Saturday, which is a very popular uh, vacation planning timeline, then you're going to be staying for eight days and seven nights. You will get seven nights of credits, not eight days of credits. This is because Disney does not expect you to be there from sunup on your arrival day until sundown on your departure day. They don't want you to have those extra credits that would go to waste. So just keep that in mind. The cheapest Disney dining plan is the quick service dining plan. This dining plan is going to give you two quick service meals per person per night of stay as well as two snacks and each Disney dining plan, all four of these types, will give you a refillable mug for each person. You can get these at the quick service location at any of the resorts. Now these can be refilled as much as you want throughout your stay. I think that you have to wait a minute between fills if I remember correctly. Um, but you're not probably not going to chug something in a minute anyway. So anyway, the next dining plan is going to be the Disney dining plan. And the Disney dining plan gives you one quick service credit and one table service credit per person per night of stay along with those two snacks and that refillable mug. So this is going to be good for a family who wants to do a lot of character dining, but they also don't want to waste their entire vacation in restaurants. Now I kind of say that like waste. I don't think that it's wasting if you do more than one table service credit or one table service meal a day. I think two is probably fine. Which leads us to the next dining plan which is the new one. The Disney Dining Plan Plus. Now this is going to give you two credits, two table service credits per person per night plus those two snacks and that refillable mug. Now, this is a great option if you are doing extra signature dining or dinner shows like Hoopty Doo Musical Review or Spirit of Aloha Lumao over at Polynesian, um, and then things like Cinderella's Royal Table, which might take two credits. So this is a great option if you are doing those or if you like to use the restaurant time to kind of unwind and you don't necessarily want theme park food. Now, Disney is actually getting a lot better with the whole theme park food thing and offering a lot more great options that aren't chicken nuggets and french fries. So this is just a really good option for those families that want a little more flexibility. 
The last type of dining plan is the deluxe dining plan. This is the most expensive, but it gives you three meals of any kind per person per night of stay. And your meals also come with an appetizer on this plan. Your table service meals on the regular Disney dining plan and the Disney dining plan plus come with dessert, but they do not come with an appetizer. Now, some people say the deluxe plan is too much food. However, if you're doing a lot of signature dining, then like if you were doing a signature meal per day, then I think this is a really great option. Or if you like to have three set meals a day, um, you can always take dessert or an appetizer to go. You don't have to eat it right there in the restaurant and then snack on it later. Now, before this new dining plan was released, the Disney dining plan was the most common that my clients usually go with. However, I definitely see the Disney dining plan plus being one that becomes a lot more popular because I had, as soon as it was announced, I threw it in my client only Facebook group and people were contacting me like, oh my goodness, that sounds great. I want to add that to my trip. And the price difference isn't much between the um, Disney dining plan and the Disney Dining Plan Plus. I think it was about $15 per adult, if I'm remembering correctly. Um, so definitely consider upgrading your dining plan. It's a great option. I like the dining plans because it makes it super easy to budget your food and also make sure that you aren't like so worried about the price on the menu because you've already paid. You can get basically anything you want off of the menu. There are usually just a couple of exclusions if any at all. And it's usually things that are like meal enhancements like lobster tails somewhere. So that was a really quick rundown of the Disney dining plans and what comes with them. If you have any questions about the dining plan, make sure to leave them in the comment section down below. And also check out this video here where I share a bunch of tips for you about the Disney dining plan. If you haven't already, make sure to give this video a big thumbs up if you enjoyed it and subscribe if you haven't already. With that being said, I will talk to you guys on Thursday with my next video. Bye!